Problem three on the exam. All right, go for it. So the underlying thing is finding the right distribution to use for these numbers, right? No. Uh, let's see. Let me pull it up real quick. And let me share this. Problem three. No. Uh, I mean, I, I've, I've sort of told you what the distribution is. I gave you the probability mass function, so you should be able to compute everything based on that. Does that make sense, Adam? Um, not particularly. I think I'm just missing what this question is trying to ask. Uh, well, I mean, I, I told, I tell you what the probability of any particular value is, right? Yeah. Uh, the only one I don't tell you is the probability of three, but that's one of the questions. And you can figure that out fairly easily by just using the, you know, using the fact of, that the probabilities have to add up to one, right? Um, the average number of chapels, that's the expected value. And I mean, we have a formula for expected value and, uh, you know, it, you know, the, we have a formula for expected value, which is basically just outcome times the probability of that outcome and you add all those together, yeah? Probability of at least two chapels getting out. Well, that's fairly, uh, that's not too hard to do. All you have to do is just add some, some of those probabilities together. P of X is the probability of any one of those values being true. So, you know, the probability that two chapels get out late is 34%, et cetera. Does that, does that kind of help, Adam? Oh, okay. I think I do see that now, yeah. In the variance, you had a formula for the variance from, you know, from go back to the one of the lectures. It's basically just the expected value of X squared minus the expected value of X. And you square that. Okay, so um, there was a little formula for variance somewhere. And so it's just using this basic little table to, to answer all of these questions. Yeah. Okay. Make sense? I, I think so. Yeah. Okay, what else? Other questions? Uh, I had a question kind of about 6A on the exam, kind of about the T distribution. So we use the T distribution to uh, like approximate the distribution for the possible distribution for the mean, right? So then for like on the exam, it said you can assume a roughly normal distribution. So would you just, you just use a normal distribution to compute uh, probabilities? No, I mean, I wouldn't, I would go, I would still use the T just to be on the safe side, just because the sample size is, is too small. Does that make sense? <laughs> uh, I mean, a roughly normal distribution is, is kind of like, a, it could just be anything that's symmetrical. I mean, if you looked at a T distribution, Rachel, you would, you would think that that was normal. Does that make sense? I mean, it looks normal, right? Yeah. So just to be on the safe side, I would, I would resort to still invoking the T distribution. Does that help? Well, so does the T distribution, We've been using it to model like distributions for the mean, haven't we? So, is there a different way to calculate the t like value? Say, say again, the a way to compute the t value. So, right, because we don't have like a confidence percent that we want. 
For which which part? Part. Oh, six A. Oh, six A. Oh. Uh. Oh, for that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were asking about like subsequent ones. Um, is it right? I told you on that one you could assume a roughly normal distribution because I wanted you to think of. Um, I basically wanted you to use the the normal distribution to compute the probability of an individual an individual student texting more than 300 minutes a day. Okay, that's not the same as like a sample. So I mean, I in this problem there is a sample, but here I'm talking about like an individual student. So like, what's the probability that a random individual student will text more than 300 minutes a day. And what I'm saying is for this part only, part A, uh, you can assume that you have a roughly normal distribution. And so you would be able to use like the standard normal tables. Does that make sense? And I even said that for this part, you could assume that the mean is exactly the sample mean and the standard deviation is exactly the sample standard deviation, okay? Um, so I'm just wanting to do, you to do like a basic computation involving the standard normal distribution in part A. But for subsequent parts, you need to be more careful. I'm just, you know, I'm saying, okay, now don't, don't think about uh, having a roughly normal distribution anymore. And that's, that's where you're gonna wanna use the T distribution. Does that make sense? Sorry, I thought you were talking about parts B and C uh, at first, I was, I was confused. That, does that okay. make sense, Rachel? Okay, so I'm right in like, so the T distribution is, it models the distribution of the mean, not, not the overall distribution. The T distribution, so, oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. You use the T distribution for the sample, right? <laughs> use the T distribution for the sample, but for the individual thing, I'm just wanting you in part A to, to just think of it as being a normal distribution and I'm wanting you to do a computation under that assumption. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, Timothy, I see you popping in here. Yeah, so for question three, to go on to the variance, I think you said something was squared and I'm just looking at the PowerPoint uh, and for the expected value formula, and I don't think see anything squared. Well, there's squares all over the place in the formula for variance. So, I mean, I did in the- Oh, sorry. I, I was looking so, at the expected value, sorry. Yeah, the expected value, no, but for the variance, yes. Here, I mean, uh, let me, hang on, just give me a sec, okay? Let me jump in here with this so I can actually annotate on this thing. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna write on this thing. So um, remember like the variance, the variance of X is you guys can see this yeah we can see it yeah so this this was the thing in one of the lectures i said well that's the expected value of x minus the mean squared which by the way if you kind of expand that out you, you might remember this that's like x squared minus 2 mu x plus mu squared and I went through this computation where I said, okay, I can break up the expected value because that's just a sum of things. So I can break it up, mu is a constant, and you end up with the expected value of just x squared minus two mu times the expected value of x plus, what is the average of a constant? Well, it's just that constant. So it's just mu squared. And by the way, this thing right here is just mu again. And so you end up getting the expected value of x squared minus two 
mu squared plus mu squared. And we get the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. And of course, mu, you, right, you realize that this is just the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. So that's the, this is the formula right here that I was talking about. This one right here. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. So uh, I, it, it, there was a lecture where I went through and kind of did that. Um, and I'm just wanting you to apply that formula on this problem right here. Compute sure. expected value of x squared, all you do is instead of doing x times p of x, you do x squared times p of x everywhere. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, good questions. What else? What else? I don't remember a, a general formula for expected value. And I, I kind of have that, um, the variance one up top, but I don't have a general one for um, the expected value anywhere in my notes. Yeah, it's right here. Here, I'll show it to you. Uh, so let's see. Was it in chapter five? Let's see. Maybe not. That's a, that's on continuous random variables. Chapter six. It's chapter four. Chapter four. So right, if you kind of click through here. And remember, this is the one, Adam. This is the one where we did that coin flip problem. Here's the general formula right here. See it? Yeah. Right, and I, and I had mentioned that another notation for this is just the expected value of X. So it's just X times the probability of X every single time. You just add all those together. It's like a weighted average of all the outcomes. Okay. Is that ringing a bell, Adam? Yeah. Yeah, I remember doing a problem like that or two. Uh -huh. And of course, what if I was doing the expected value, hang on, so if I was doing like the expected value of x squared, how would that change? Like here, this formula is saying do, you know, this formula is basically saying that to do the expected value of x, you just sum over all possible x, x times the probability of x, right? For the expected value of x squared, how would that change, Adam? Um, you would just square that first x, right? Yeah, you are right. It would just be x squared times the probability of x. Exactly right, exactly right. Yeah. And do you start, like, the thing has i equals starting at 1? Well, Our numbers start at 0, but do we start at 1 anyway? Uh, well, th but these are just, those i's are running over some in sub-indices. This is just saying, go over all possible outcomes. I mean, this i right here is, you know, I, what I've basically done is I've said, here's the data points, x1, x2, dot, dot, dot. Xn, and, and I'm basically saying that the expected value of X is just X1, whatever that is, times the probability of X1 plus et cetera, plus Xn times the probability of Xn, uh, oops, of Xn. Does that make sense? I mean, really all I'm doing is I'm saying it's you're adding over all possible Xs times the probability of X. It's just giving a weighted average to the outcomes. I mean, so I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, you even have to have an index at all. <laughs> you, you just add up all the X values times the probability of that X. And that's, that's what the expected value is. 
Does that make sense, Tim? Yeah, that makes sense. I have one last question. Uh, this is kind of what Aaron already did, but for uh, question one C, with the because the probability of me choosing your uh, flight or at topping or whatever is not just the probability that I pick any of the toppings. So I I don't know. I need to think about that more. But I don't know how to do like the same. But the probability that you picked the same thing, I'm rather confused. Well, so for part C, it's pretty clear that ice cream doesn't matter anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's out. Um, how many possible uh, – so, so and, and like you might as well assume that, that my toppings – so suppose it's just me and you, Tim, okay? Just me and you. And suppose I've already gone in and, and done my Cold Stone creation, and I have my three toppings. Yeah. They happen to be peanuts, gummy bears, and Reese's Pieces or something. Yeah. But you have no idea what that is. So what's the probability that you're going to then choose toppings that overlap with mine by exactly two? So you know that there are 30 total mix-ins. Isn't that what it, what it is? 30? Correct. Okay. And you just, right. And you're going to choose three of them. So the total number of ways that you could do that would be like 30 choose three. So that's yeah. the denominator, right? Yeah. Uh, but then you have to say, okay, but how many of those uh, three topping choices of mine are going to overlap with Hammett's by exactly two? Yeah. So yeah. you think about, okay, well, that means I would need to choose two from among, you know, peanuts, Reese's Pieces, and gummy bears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you just need to think that through. And it, but don't overthink it. And then, and then you have to pick something from not my toppings, right? You have to choose two from mine and then one not from mine, yeah? And yeah. then constitute your numerator. That's kind of, that was the conversation I was having with Aaron in that Makes sense. Sour's discussion. Okay. So don't don't overthink it. It's not meant to be uh, it's not meant to be tricky once you kind of figure out that you know you might as well assume that my choice has already been made and then you just have to make sure that you <laughs> that you overlap mine by exactly two. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. What else? Keep it coming. Is that it? So, I mean, I think I, you know, even though I'm going to lecture on Monday about some specifics with hypothesis testing, uh, you should eat, you know, you have everything you need to do it, everything on this test at this point. There's not like any new material that I'm going to give on Monday that you need that's critical to your success on the final. That's not true. You actually have all, everything you need at this point. Uh, but certainly the lecture on Monday would, you know, kind of help you think through hypothesis testing again. Um, and that might help you in a, on a variety of fronts. But right now you have everything you need to succeed on the on the final for sure, okay? Um, well, if you guys have any questions, may, just be sure to send me an email. Um, you know, reach out and, and we'll, uh, we'll sort it out somehow. You guys all right? Good to go? I think so. All right, cool. Well, hey, I'll let you guys get back to, to your business then, all right? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. See you guys. <laughs>